Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome to another episode of Are You Dying to Know? I know you're dying to know. Trish is dying to know. I am. Today, what we're talking about today, today. <laughs> mm, mm. Today we're going to talk about what happens when a body comes to Tracy in the mortuary from the coroner. So after there's been a medical examination done, that might be a few different um, ways it might come back or it might always be the same way. Tracy's going to tell us that. And then what she has to do to bring the body to a point where it can be viewed by the relatives and the service can be held. But before we go on, yep. meet our mate, Calvin Spine. Hey, Calvin. Hi, Tracy. How are you doing today? Good. Calvin's here just to uh, keep us company and he's here to hold my hand when things get a little bit challenging. But we'll warn you if anything comes along, that you might want to look away or you know if yeah. you're a little bit squeamish you might not want to hear about um, so stay with us and you're going to learn a little bit about what happens inside the mortuary yeah. before we get started though i'm just going to ask tracy a question because we like this whole channel to run on your questions so if you have any queries at all about what happens in the mortuary please write it in the comments below and tracy's going to endeavor to answer anything that she can and if she, will. she yeah. can't she'll find out the answer for you from friends in the industry yep yeah, definitely yeah. um but i have a question for tracy today my question for tracy is do dead people make noises uh yes there you go they do mm -hmm. when you're moving a body around washing and dressing there's air that will come out. When you're moving and in your press anywhere around this the torso area, you'll get air coming up, so it makes a sound. Like um, what? Oh, it could be a gurgling sound. Mm. And it could be just some air coming out. Sounds like it could be breathing. Yeah, it's like a breath. So that I think that's where the scary story comes from. Pretty like, scary. Yeah, but we know it's just ex Bullshit of air. It's not what about air. groans and that sort of thing? No, not really. Not groans. I've never heard groans or moans or anything like that. So no. I actually had an incident. Well, well a couple of times actually, where I've rolled a deceased towards me to to dry the back, and as I've done that, the hands come up and actually knocked my face shield off. <laughs> so that way it gives you a start, but that was just momentum of me moving so momentum. but nothing scary it's just yeah yeah it's all all explained in science there's no scary noises really comes from the okay. cool thank you i needed to know that yeah all right so on to our discussion today we talked about the basic prep uh in the first episode if you watched that you would have seen that uh I'm just going to talk a little bit about when we get um, bodies brought in from the coroners after autopsies um, and what different preparation I have to do um, with the deceased from that. Now um, there's a few different autopsies that can be performed uh, but I'll talk um, about the head post first. Um, a head post that a pathologist performs is where they make an incision with a scalpel from ear to ear, uh, across the back of the head, uh, through the scalp, and the face will be brought forward and the back of the head will be taken down, where then with the drill, they'll drill um, the skull around the back, where they'll take the skull off, which will expose the brain. Okay, now the brain's always removed. Now the brain's removed and they'll take, um, they'll take little slices and uh, testing to do some pathology testing with that um, and you cannot put the brain back in to the cavity of the head once it's been removed why um, because the brain's um, jelly like and it turns very um, it goes very jelly so it, the shape is ah, it, it, fluid it, it, it turns really soft it, it's right. jelly unless you treat it unless you treat it in embalm it with chemicals yeah. where you'll get the solid brain it is very soft and it's a bit like jelly so when you put it down it spreads out quite oh, a bit okay. so because of that you can't it won't fit back in it's just too it's it's just too difficult so it won't be placed back in um, what they'll do is um place some um, cotton in there instead or some kind of 
wouldn't to absorb any fluids and bloods that's leaking out or anything and then they'll pop the skull back on um, where there's two screws at either side where the skull's held and then they'll bring this the face and the back of the head up and they'll suture right across. Um, the problem with when we get them in from uh, the coroner's after the pathologist has done that, sometimes the skull's not sitting correct here. So across, I'll just, this is Calvin, by the way, he's my good model. So the skull sits... I must be the bad model. <laughs> not at all, not at I'm all. I'm the live one. <laughs> the skull sits too far over so you get a ridge here then it looks a bit like frankenstein ah, so there's like a, a ridge yeah a big ridge and that's not good for a view and for the families wanting to see their loved one so what i need to do is correct that i need to reopen the whole head again so i'll go into detail about what i do yeah yep okay so the process is when i shall undo all the suturing that the um the pathologist has done after they've finished um, their autopsy. I'll take the skull back off, take out all the padding that they've put in because we don't need any of that discard at all. My process is to then clean the skull and also inside the skull. And I need to clean it with a chemical that um, will cauterize the blood vessels all the capillaries and the vessels. So, hang on, we still bleed after we die? Well, we don't bleed, we still bleed, yes where the blood's still in the vessel so it'll still seep out but it will still ooze out we need to cauterize that because it will leak you know we need to seal everything so i have a chemical that actually does cauterize the um vessels seals everything up we clean everything inside what what does it look like inside someone's head um does it look like um what you'd imagine the inside of a skull to look like like white bony with a little bit of red and mucky or oh it's still quite red because it's still got all the vessels full of blood and everything inside and it looks like um it looks you know you'll see the sockets of the eyes and the nose and uh the mouth the uh, ears are and everything so it's it's like looking at uh, calvin yeah it's quite fascinating it's fascinating and, and it's the human body is an amazing thing to see and it is see and you will see uh, down to the spinal cord and we also need to stop any fluids coming out of that area as well so I will treat that as well. So what do you use to put the chemical in? Cotton well I'll soak it up in cotton and dab um, with the cotton to cauterize around and down the spinal cord area I pour powder it's an absorbent powder that absorbs any fluid that comes up. And then instead of putting the amount of packing that they have in the back of the head that the pathologist put in, it's quite too much. That's why the skull doesn't sit properly. I will get a ball of cotton that's just about this size where I'll soak in the um, fluid that will cauterize as well. And I place that inside the head where I will pop the skull back on the top. Before I put the skull back on, I would just have to make... Um, two incisions on either side of the head here with, with, with a file or even sometimes a saw. I'll make two little nicks and this is where the screws are going to sit inside neatly and tidily so they're not sticking out of yeah. the skull area so the skull doesn't sit off the head. The screws will sit in and when I put the skull back on I'll tighten the self tightening screws, tighten them up with a screwdriver, just a regular screwdriver, and that'll hold the skull back in place. And after that, I, am, I have a product that you place around, it's like a seal, it's a sealant, and that'll seal the gap all the way around. And after I've done all that, making sure it's all smooth and there's no ridges and no bumps anywhere, then I will pull the face back up and the skull back up and do a big suture um, a baseball suture right across, which is um, a baseball suture I've talked about before in the first episode. Um, it takes quite a while. The scalp can be really, the, the skin can be really thick. I'll use my S-shaped needle in the bigger and because it, it's quite tough, it's easier to use. So hang on, if you've got a big suture across there, and say the person who died's got hair like you, yeah, right, lots of hair. Yeah. So if you've got a big suture across there, what like is there hair there, or they've shaved that bit so they? No, they don't. Like... They don't normally shave the hair. Um, what I normally do is 
if they've got lots of hair like me, I'll, I'll pin it up this way and pin it down so it's out of the way. You would do get, it takes, it's very, it takes a long time to do that session with a lot of hair because you've got to pick the hair out the stitching that you've done. Um, so sometimes it can take a very long time for long hair. Um, but you know, you have to be patient and you know, you have to make sure you take care and do it correctly. Obviously, but what I'm saying is it'll be a point where you don't see the suture. Yeah, you won't see the suture, right. yeah. Uh, if the um the deceased has no hair, like a, oh, a gentleman, like my with, husband, yeah, with the shaven head, um, the pathologist, the way they do the cutting is really quite far back in the head. So uh, once placed in the coffin, you can't really see. Once we've got the dressing around them and the drapery around, or sometimes the family will bring a hat in. And yeah, they put a hat on. Or we request a hat. You know, if it's a. Uh, um if it's needed so and one in here uh for children we usually request a hat because mm -hmm. you know babies you can see it unfortunately and the parents usually like to pick baby up to cuddle so we always suggest a hat right so right okay all right so that's what you do after a head post yeah that's a head post okay so you're working, when you're working with the inside of the skull and all that stuff you're doing with the powder and the, all the stuff, the chemicals, you're yeah. doing all that with the person's face down here? Uh, the face is pulled down, yes. So what do you see? Uh, just, bone? Just bone. Okay. It just, the, the face, uh, the scalp will come down and it will just sit over this part and it's just down to here. So all I can see is the, the frontal lobe yeah. here. Is okay. this here? Yeah. Right, okay, so that's the head post. Ask me anything you want about the funeral industry and the mortuaries and I'll try and answer it as best way possible. And you need to like this video too. Thank you. <laughs> Ask me some questions. Go on. Can we talk? I dare you. Can we talk? Yes. Okay, good. Excellent. <laughs> you can't shut this one up. <laughs>